here we go. Welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting and other crafts, and this is episode one. I'm Nicole, and my full-time job is a math education professor. So I teach math content and pedagogy to people who want to be teachers and it's the best job ever. In addition to that, I am a mom to a three-year-old and a wife to an amazing husband and I'm an obsessive knitter. <laughs> I've knit since my childhood. I actually don't really remember learning how to knit. I always just remember knowing how to knit and ultimately like somebody taught me. Um, I just don't remember it because I was so young. I did take knitting lessons when I was a tiny human. Um, I just have always knit, knit for my dolls. Now I knit for my daughter, I knit for myself. I'm really into knitting sweaters <laughs> and I'm also really into YouTube and watching all the knitting things on YouTube and I've wanted to start a channel forever, <laughs> maybe not forever. I wanted to start a channel for probably a couple of years and ultimately I just let fear get in the way. Um, I think that it's really scary to put yourself out there on the internet and I feel motivated to do it now because I feel like there's no perfect timing. Like I'm always looking for the perfect time to start my YouTube channel about knitting and it's just never gonna happen. So today's the right time. And ultimately I crave community. Like I watch all these YouTube channels about knitting and I feel like the people on there are like my friends and I want them to be my friend. And but a conversation just like can't be one-sided like I always like want to say something back and so I'm gonna try that um, here in this space so thank you for coming and um, yeah so I live in the Pacific Northwest I live in Oregon I'm from Illinois but we moved out here for me to be a professor and I love the Pacific Northwest. It's so beautiful. Like the hiking's amazing. Uh, you know, we're by the ocean. I'm, I live in the middle of wine country. So uh, there's 81 wineries in my town. Like, I mean, it's like amazing. Now it's also the perfect place to wear knitwear because it's like pretty moderate temperature where I live. Um, especially compared to the Midwest. In the Midwest, we'd have tons of snow. And so the first year that we lived out here, I didn't even wear any of my worst of weight sweaters or anything like that. I was basically like fingering white sweaters only. But I think I've become accustomed to the weather out here because now I'm wearing like DK and worst of weight sweaters. I just think I was, mid my Midwestern self was like, it's so warm, but it, <laughs> it is actually not. Although it is warm today, it's in the 90s. Um, so I'm first going to share my finished objects now, since it's the first episode, I didn't know like where to start and I didn't want to like have too much. So I just decided to pick what I finished this summer. So I have three things. I've only finished three things this summer. And I think part of it is that I just like keep casting things on and like a hummingbird knitting like all over. <laughs> so the first thing I finished was in June and it's a Christmas sweater. So this is the Soldatna pattern by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knits. Um, this is my second Soldana. My first one was a very bright and blue one and I knew immediately I wanted to make the Christmas one. Initially I thought that I wanted to make it out of like a Rowan tweed or something and I do think that would be really neat. But I ended up knitting it in these like hand dyed yarns. I'll hold it up. Here. 
The yarn I used was Lady Men Fiber Arts and the red was called Poison Apple and the green was all the way to the bank and then this kind of gray, it's speckled, it is called all the way to the bank and I don't remember what this like kind of gold copper is. I just don't and I don't have the tags either I don't think um I love it and ultimately I would love around Christmas time in December to also have sewn a skirt to match it I bought this fabric from Joann's which I should have brought with me to show you here but it has like Christmas trees and things on it as part of the same color scheme and I think it'll look really cool together and so, yeah, so I knit a Christmas sweater <laughs> and I'll actually show you another Christmas sweater later today. Um, I'm not usually into making all the holiday sweaters, but I, I really, um, I'm really into it right now. So that was the first sweater that I made. And then I actually finished the second sweater and uh, so since we're getting to know each other here. Uh, you may not know this about me, but I have knit a lot of pink sweaters. I don't know the count on this. I think this is number nine, my number, my ninth pink sweater, I think. I, I'll have to be like, I'll have to go count them to be sure, but I've knit a lot of pink sweaters. I think it's because I like to wear them. <laughs> and I have to say, out of all of my pink sweaters that I've ever knit. Um, this is the best. I think this is maybe the most beautiful thing I've ever knit. And I'll show it to you soon, sorry. Uh, but also the pattern is just amazing. The construction on it is so unique. Okay. And maybe it won't look that amazing in this um, video here. But basically, you hold mohair and a fingering together for the body here, and then just mohair for the sleeve, and then mohair and fingering together here. I'll hold this up. And like the Solana, this is also a crop sweater. I love crop sweaters. I wear them a ton. Oh, I need to tell you uh, what pattern this is. So this is the Diophantus Raglan by Jessie Mae. And it was my first Jessie Mae design. And oh my goodness, like so, so good. Like there was YouTube, like there was tutorial links in there, um, which were especially helpful because the construction of this like to go from like holding fingering and mohair to just like mohair to fingering and mohair and, and how you get the deep V. Like having a tutorial for that, for that construction was so helpful. And I actually, I actually think this could be a first sweater. Like it's not a traditional construction that you might suggest for a first sweater, but with all the supports she has in there, I, I think it very well could be somebody's first sweater. And it's so beautiful. I cannot wait to wear this in the fall. And so it's exciting because I feel like in the fall I can wear this right away. And then I have my my Christmas holiday sweater. And so I'm like stocking up the sweaters for the fall and I'm super pumped about that. Um, the yarn for this, couldn't find the tags for and I can't pronounce the name so I wore this t-shirt I got it from Naughty Lamb <laughs> which is a yarn store near me in, and I don't really even though it's super close to me I actually don't go to it that often um, which is probably a good thing because I just want to buy all the yarn there because they have a beautifully curated store and and they're online store is just amazing too if you can't go. Um, the website's super easy to use. And this yarn I bought on the Rose City Yarn Crawl that we had out here. Things were a little different with COVID with it. 
And so I did most of my rosé yarn crawling virtually. Normally I would go to all the places. And actually in 2020, that was the last thing I did before we went into like kind of lockdown. So I had like some precious memories around that. But so this year in 2021, I decided to only go to one store in person and Naughty Land was it because I can drive there really easy. I think the closest of the Rosa Yarn Crawl, because I'm south of Portland, I think it's the closest yarn store to me. And, and also, I love it. <laughs> so this yarn I got on the Rosa Yarn Crawl and not this year. Oh my goodness. Nope, it was in 2020. Look at that time just passing by and me not remembering. <laughs> but the brand is, um, it's hand dyed and it is a French brand that I, I just can't pronounce it well. And I, so what I'll do is I'll make sure I link it below in the description bar. Um, but it's on their website and, um, I think they still have it actually. Um, maybe not this exact color, but I, I definitely have been there recently and I saw that they still had this yarn and it was amazing. Just incredible. And I just, <laughs> I actually would knit another one of these, I think, um, because my last thing about the pattern on this, I think it gave you three different or more at least three different sleeve options. So I did this sleeve, which is a bishop sleeve. So it's pretty open and, um, and it comes cinched in, so a bishop sleeve. And even the bishop sleeve had two different options, kind of a slimmer fitting and then a very like poofy one. And I did kind of a middle thing. So in the pattern, it suggested going up a couple needle sizes for the sleeve. And I think that only went up one needle size because I knew I wanted it poofy, but I've never had a big sleeve. And so I didn't know, like as a mom, I'm like running around, like how wearable that would be. So I, I did just one needle size up. So gave you different options for a, uh, bell, a bishop sleeve, but it also gave you a pattern for a bell sleeve. And it gave you the pattern for a short sleeve kind of like flutter sleeve. And so I'm getting more hair in my head <laughs> from Williams Brown. But I, um, I'm a huge mohair fan. I would totally knit one of these again. And I think if I knit one again, I might want to do it in like a short sleeve flutter sleeve kind of situation and maybe something really bright. Um, but I love, love, love this pattern. I, like I'm gushing about it like I'm like <laughs> several minutes into this thing right now and I'm gushing about it because I do think it's maybe the most elegant thing I've ever made and it feels good to make something that you like the way you look in and you feel is just really beautiful so that was really cool okay then the last thing I finished this summer is a pair of socks so I I am the worst sock knitter. I usually only knit one sock and I never finish the second sock. It's just, it's like a thing I have. I, I should bring my, like, do a sock parade here of like all my single socks. Like, I love to knit socks, but I just, I don't know. I only knit one. <laughs> I'm not even sad about it. And so this is exciting because it's a full pair for this fall and, and then it has pink in it. <laughs> so I've been doing the summer sock camp with the crazy sock lady. I mean, like who isn't? <laughs> I feel like everybody's doing it. Um, and I was going to just knit like two pairs of socks. Like that was my goal. But now I think I want to enter a pair of socks um, for every cabin. And so this was the wild card cabin. I used Haya Haya Flyers. It was my first time using Haya Haya Flyers. I'm I don't know. I didn't like hate it, but it did hurt my hands a little bit. And I just really like nine inch circulars a lot. So I don't know. I might give my high high flyers away to somebody that wants them. I might use them one more time just to see. I don't know. Anyway, so this, I'm sure you're familiar with it. It is 
the Desert Vista Dye Works self-striping yarn that was custom for um, summer stock camp. And I did, Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady, I did her heel toe do -si do pattern, which is um, vanilla on the back side, and then the front, there's this little, uh, maybe I'll take it off so you can see. There's this really cool kind of chevron pattern that happens on the front, and then it's vanilla on the back. And it was just fun, because most of the time when I do self-striping, I just do a plain. And so this is my first time doing some sort of pattern with self-striping, and I just, it was really nice that it had some interest. I think if you're looking for a pattern that's like a little more interesting than vanilla, like a plain sock, I think I, I think this would be great. I know people have different opinions about like pattern socks, like whether they like to do them or not, and I don't know. I, I just don't complete my pattern socks as quickly as I do the vanilla ones, but this one I think I could do, like I, well, I did do it quickly, I did it in a month, and that's very fast for me. I'm, I know lots of people knit uh, a pair of socks a month or more, but for me to knit a pair of socks, a full pair in a month, that's incredible. For me, mostly sock knitting in the past has been like kneading knitting. Like, like I would actually, actually that little basket right there, I would carry with me to meetings. We have a ton of meetings as a professor <laughs> and I would knit. And then COVID happened and I sort of like lost my way because I didn't have to go into meetings. They were me on Zoom and I could really knit anything. And then I wasn't always knitting socks, but I found my groove and I got back into the sock knitting during meetings. And so now I'm, that's probably my main time of sock knitting is either traveling in a car or um, I have a three-year-old who does a bunch of lessons, like dance lessons, swim lessons. And so it's nice at her lessons to like work on something. The sock's good for that. Car, meeting, stuff like that. All right, so that's my finished objects. Now I will share my works in progress or my whips. And I have a lot of those. Like many knitters, I have a lot of those. I'm not going to share all of them <laughs> so that this can end at a decent time. But I am going to show the ones I've been actively working on in the past like two, week or two. Actually, I think everything I'm showing I've wor actively worked on in the last week. Okay. So the first whip I will show is in this bag that I got from my friend, my friend Kelly. She owns a yarn store in Illinois called Le, Le Mouton Rouge Knittery. And when I used to live in Illinois, it was my local yarn store. Now I live out in Oregon and it's still my local yarn store. <laughs> um, so I love these bags when the, what's it? Fringe supply company stopped making their bags. I was really sad, and but not anymore because um, for me, like these were a wonderful replacement, and the price point on them is really great. I don't remember how much these are, but oh, also this year at the the Rosie Yarn Curl, I got this really cool pin from Starlight Knitting Society. This is my Gilmore Girls pin from my friend Kelly's yarn store. I think I got this from um, Starlight Says Fearless a couple years ago. And I mean, Bernie, I cannot. <laughs> this is from Shelly Can. I definitely pre ordered that the second she showed it. I was like, it would be still my heart. But so, anyway, I like this bag is like my favorite pins. So I put my like top four here. I, I just, I, these two, they fill me up so much. <laughs> Um, okay, that's not what we're here for. I'm supposed to show you my whip. Okay, so I just weaved in all the ends on this cardigan that's for my three-year-old Matilda. It's um, by Petite Knit. I think I always want to call it a, a cardigan, but it's called the Anchors Jacket. And I don't know because of the yarn I use if you can see it, but there's this nice little kind of broken rib yoke which is really nice. 
And the yarn I used is from my friend Kelly's store, it's Stitched Together Studios, and it's a colorway called Rise Together. And I had originally bought that yarn for myself, and Matilda is very picky about what she wears. And so I decided I wanted to make her a sweater, so I just showed her a bit of my stash and said, pick what you want, and this is what she picked. And it was amazing the difference it made in her disposition towards this because she like wanted to try it on and she seems excited about it for this fall. I made it the size six, seven, even though she's three, she's really tall, really, really tall. And so she's wearing like a size six already. Um, and even though I knit the size six, seven, I have a loose gauge. I think it'll be actually a bit bigger than that. And I knit, the length on it much longer. I think I added at least two inches, maybe three. And basically I used a sweater from Hannah Anderson she has and as like a guide to know like how long I wanted it. I'm still considering this a whip because I need to sew the buttons on. And the buttons are really amazing. My friend, Brenda, she lived in Estonia for at least six months, maybe more during her sabbatical. And she bought me these amazing buttons when she was in Estonia. And they, you can't smell them through the camera, but they are Juniper and they have a very, very fragrant smell. And I love the way they smell and they, they feel so soft and or smooth. I don't know, soft. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to see. I don't know if you'll see that well, but I think it looks really good. They have wonderful memories. I am thinking the buttons are maybe a little too big for the sweater. I don't know, like, but I feel like all the pros sort of outweigh the cons on this. So I'm gonna put those buttons on this sweater. Um, yeah, so, I'm calling that a whip until those buttons are sewed on. Otherwise, who knows? Maybe, oh, here's, I have a printed off pattern. This might show it better with the broken rim. This is my second time knitting this pattern. I knit this for her when she was like a year old and I used a tweed and it was really, it looked so good. And so I thought I would knit it in a tweed again. I even bought yarn to make it in a tweed, but she picked this out and I just need to go with it. <laughs> okay. My other whip that's giving me so much joy is a visual pattern, but it's not in a good way to show it. It's the Love Note by Tin Can Knits. And this is actually my third Love Note. <laughs> I have a little stitch marker on here from Gabrielle Makes. And that's indicating what the front side is. So I remember because I did knit it cropped and I did short row shaping. So I just wanted to remember what side is the front and back so I could mark it later when I'm done. So is this neon -y? I'm like, is this pink? It's kind of peachy, orangey, um, it has some pinks. I knit a lot of pink sweaters, so for me, I'm thinking that this isn't pink because it's mostly orange. <laughs> Just lots of pink. Okay, this yarn is also from Nutty Lamb at, from the Rosie Yarn Crawl, and I don't know if it's showing up that well on the camera, but this is a slub yarn, and then this is Surrey Alpaca, and this is kind of blown out a bit. So, in person, it's oranges, yellows, and pinks, and it just looks like kind of neon orange from here. And then this, in person, actually, there's these, there's bits of pink that are this color in here as well. So, it's it's a great color for me. I will wear it a ton. And I love the sleeves on the Love Note. Pretty much knit them to pattern. I've knit 
like I said, this is my third love note and I had plans for a fourth and a fifth. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, I knit the sleeve exactly the pattern. I love the way it fits. It's three quarters lengths, which is so nice because like as a mom, I'm always like washing something in the sink, running around or teaching, like touching stuff. And like, I always am like rolling up my sleeves. You don't have to when they're three fourths. And then it's got that like, just that little kind of poof. So, if you're familiar with the love note, I'll try and put a picture of it out here from my plastic sleeve. It is a sweater that actually has a lace yoke, and you'll notice mine does not have a lace yoke. Because this is my third one, I've knit two with the lace yoke. I just thought, why not try something different? So, for my third one, I'm leaving the lace yoke out. Um, so, here's a picture of it. And they also give you options in the pattern, which are really neat because you can do a cropped version like this or a full length one. You can do short rows in the back so it has a high low thing. You don't have to do that. And if you're not familiar with Tin Can Knits patterns, like so incredible the sizing. It goes from a newborn, I think. I don't know for sure what I'm gonna do here. I'm thinking newborn all the way up to um, generous sizing. So zero to six months sizing all the way up to 5XL. So that is a 24.5 inch circumference all the way up to a 72.5 inch circumference. So yes, so I think it would be neat to my fourth love note to knit one for Matilda. Since I'm familiar with the pattern at this point. <laughs> and, um, I just have one sleeve left to go on this and it'll be great. Uh, like easy knitting. This, I think sometimes people get stuck on their sleeves, but for me, the love note sleeves like go so fast, partially because they're not a full sleeve. And I think the other reason they go so fast for me is I invested in like shorter as a nine inch needles, like little short ones. Let's see if they're in here. From Knit Picks. And so it has the cord as a, like a really short cord and so I just whip around on the sleeve. It's super fun. It's great TV knitting. And it's the Olympics now. So I've um, been doing that, like knitting, knitting this and watching the Olympics. And it's been really fun. I, I think since I don't exclusively knit one thing at a time, like it'll probably take me several days to finish this. But I do think I'm hoping I'll be able to finish it in the next week or so. And my sweaters like that I'm knitting while I'm watching TV in, I've been keeping in this giant basket that I got at a local fiber festival up here. And to be honest, I think I got it for like $20. And I'm, I'm not usually like a let's talk about price kind of person, but um, hello. <laughs> I think that is so... It's such a good deal, is what I'm trying to say. And it's so fun to like, I just carry this around my living room. I used to carry that around the office, but I haven't been going into the office much. So here it is at home and I'm not carrying it around home because I've been knitting some other socks, which I will show you. I have two more, three more whips. <laughs> okay, so my next whip is, well, technically this could have been a finished object because it's a half object. Um, but I'm holding it a whip so that I keep the mentality of like finishing. So I knit a vanilla sock and it is my first scrappy sock and it is beautiful. I love it so much. So last year I got my very first yarn advent from Stress Knits and my husband actually surprised me with it, which is kind of crazy when you think about advents and like setting your alarm and ordering it and stuff. So like, I don't know, he must have heard me talking about 
obviously he heard me talking about my knitting a lot <laughs> for him to do that. But also, side note, he knits as well. He is not like wildly avid about it like I am, but he does knit. Um, so anyway, he got me this advent and I was super excited about it. I knit a giant wrap and it's incredible. And I think it's one of these things I'll keep for forever. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the leftover scraps from that, somehow, the, even though it turned out so massive and giant, there was actually leftovers from the scrappy advent. And I treasured them. <laughs> like I was just like holding on to these little scraps. And I thought, why not knit a pair of scrappy socks? And so I would take out my little, so I was keeping them in my summer sock camp little bag here. And I would take out one that I wanted to use and weigh it. And let's say it weighed 12 grams. I would just use six grams of it or less than six grams so that I knew that I would have enough for a second sock. My goal is to make a scrappy sock that also looks very similar. Did you know that these three little mint things, the cuff, the heel, and the toe are three different color mints? I don't even remember their names, but this one's like a plain mint. This is a mint with these really light golden speckles. And then this mint, has like dark green and red, very Christmassy. It's almost on the on a very blue end of the spectrum of mints. And so I, that was what I did. I just sort of sorted out my minis and was like, okay, the mint ones will be the cuff, heel, and toe, and the pinkyish ones will be, I guess, or purple, um, will be the, the the sock part and. The really neat thing about the Stress Mints Advent for me is that her color palette is like, her aesthetic is like, it, it speaks my soul. Like there's not a single color of hers that she makes that I don't love. And so it was so exciting that Kyle chose to get that Advent for me because I knew without even opening it, like every single one of the minis in there I would love it and I did and so I'm gonna use every last ounce of that yarn <laughs> so from her advent I will have a giant wrap a pair of socks from the scraps of it and it also came with um a whole hank that I haven't knit socks of yet either so I'll make at least another pair of socks out of that so I mean I feel like I got a lot of neat things out of that the gift that keeps giving is how I feel about that advent <laughs> Okay, so for my next whip is another sock. Had I not have casted on two socks in July, I could have finished another pair, I think, this July. Uh, but, oh, so this one I'm knitting toe up, which I'm not a huge toe up fan. I'm definitely cuff down, heel flap and gusset kind of person, but the pattern for this was toe up and I thought might as well. I'm also not a huge magic loop person. Like if I have a choice, I don't choose magic loop. I don't mind it, but it's not like a favorite. So I'm doing magic loop and toe up. I'm just really pushing myself out of my comfort zone, which I'm also doing, or I'm planning on doing the sock bingo through Yarnia. So I think this will be great. I was like, you know what? I'm doing things out of my comfort zone. It'll get me more squares on my sock bingo from Yarnia. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is a pencil. So there's the tip of the pencil, the wood, the yellow, the, the metal part of it. And I'm working on the eraser now. Uh, the pattern says that it's doing an afterthought heel. I would argue that it's doing a forethought heel in the sense that like it has you put in scrap yarn. That's what these blue things are. Blue things are. So I think like an afterthought heel is like when you it's an afterthought, like, oh, I've knit this too. Let me put it in. Let me find where I'm gonna put it in. And I think like a forethought heel is like, there's forethought, like I'm going to eventually put this in. I don't know if those are actually real lingo. I should look that up before I start having an opinion so strong about it. <laughs> but, uh, so the this is a kit from Pearls and Postulates. 
and it came with this like paper pattern of how to do these socks and then it came with minis to make these socks which is really fun and I'm not I had honestly don't even know how I stumbled across pearls and postulates I don't know we can just thank Instagram or I like to call it my Instagram. <laughs> and I love her yarn. I'm not really sure. I think her, her shop is like science STEM based and being a math ed professor, like, I'm like, what? I don't really know if that's the only yarn she does, but she does have a line of yarn that is based on women in STEM. Like there's like an actual woman that has a STEM career that she picks. I don't know if she interviews them or what, but she designs like a colorway after them. I'm like, oh, that's so neat. Anyway, so when I was not able to decide on what I wanted from there, I stumbled across this kit and on their website and it was a pencil. And I was like, I need to make these like for the start of school. Like that will be so amazing. And so that's why I started them in July as well. <laughs> But I want to really focus my energy on not starting yet again another sock and like continuing on with these pairs so that my hope is that end of August, I would either have a full pair of pencil socks or a full pair of scrappy socks. And if like that both happened, that would be amazing. I don't know if that's realistic for me, but Those are my whips. I have one more whip that I'm actually working on in the sense that I've swatched and started it. I think yesterday. Well, I swatched a couple days ago. And okay. Maybe I should show the pattern first. So my friend Kelly, she, I guess that's a yarn store, and she is running the knit along to make a Christmas sweater in July uh, and through August, I think. We cast it on July 25th. And this is the sweater I'm going to make. It is called, again, I don't wanna like mispronounce it, but Yule, Yule Gram. Oops. Yule Gram, I think. I don't know if you can tell, but basically it is a very retro looking sweater that has a folded over collar and then there's this Christmas tree here. So I knew I wanted to make it and so I texted Kelly and I asked her if she could dye me some yarn for it. So she also dyes yarn and I'm not sure what her yarn label is called, if it's Red Sheep I think. She has this colorway, it's called Judy's Mint. And it is really life-giving. Like, okay, of course it's blowing out here. It's looking like white with speckles here, but it's mint, a beautiful mint, a beautiful tonal mint with like blue, yellow, red speckles. And so on the 25th, which was July 25th, it was Sunday, there was a cast on party and I was working on my swatch. Well, I had already swatched, but I had a situation where here's the swatch. And the sweater is mostly reverse stock in that with, so it'll look like that. My situation was, I got gauge, <laughs> which isn't a situation. And it's amazing to get gauge. Uh, but I wasn't in love with the fabric because the sweater's gonna have negative ease and so I wanted it to be denser so that when it's like stretched on my body, it's not holding. So I decided, so that kind of slowed me from starting it because I needed to make a decision around what needle size to use and what size to knit. So basically I ended up going down a needle size from recommended gauge and up a size in the pattern. So originally I was gonna knit a size medium and now I'm knitting a size large with a smaller needle and a denser fabric. So it'll hopefully work out and 
I think there'll be some grace because it's a cropped fitted sweater, so it's supposed to have negative ease. So, and I started it yesterday. <laughs> As in, I guess it's not in it to roast, uh, but I wanted to start it because like the knowing's happening. I think I have a lot of like, I, I had a little bit of guilt around starting, starting yet again another project just because I have so much going on, but because there's more than this, but this is what I've been actively working on. And it is what it is. I was like, you know what? I really want this sweater for Christmas. And if I wait until it's Christmas season or, you know, or my own accord, I wouldn't necessarily start it. But since there's this sit along going, I'm going to feel motivated. And I actually plan on really devoting some time on that, on this project next week. So that's my whips. Since this is a new podcast or a new video channel on YouTube for me, I'm just looking to see what I um, was going to do next. Oh, I have a stash. A lot of us do. And I just thought, and I've got books. I was just thinking it would be nice to really talk about those dream knits. I don't know if this is something I will... When I share dream knits, I don't know if it's something I will cast on immediately, but it is, you know, those things that you're like looking at your yarn in your stash or you're looking at the pattern on your shelf. Like, so I share this, the things that I'm thinking about when I'm not knitting. <laughs> so, okay. One of my dream knits is from this book. <clears throat> So I'm going to try to say it. Koftebokin. I don't know. Anyone knows Nor Norwegian, you can let me know if I pronounced it well. <laughs> Basically, this entire book is in Nor Nor Norwegian. I don't speak Norwegian <laughs> or read it, but I had to buy it because I love... Okay, this whole series, I don't have the first book or the second book, but like life goals, I definitely want them. Oh, they're beautiful quality and I'll show you the sweater that like caught my eye and why I had to get this. And well actually this yellow one. Oh it's on the cover actually. This one. I I need the sweater. I need the sweater. So my husband's family lives in Illinois, Northern Illinois, like on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin. And we go home every year for Christmas. And I really enjoy, like deeply enjoy staying on his family's farm. Like it's, I love it. And for Christmas last year, my mother-in-law, she gave me a gift card to a yarn store that's like a local yarn store to them. It's called Wall of Yarn. And they have a lot of Rama yarn there. I'm not for sure, but I think that the owners might be like a supplier or something for Rama yarns. I don't know. But they have a lot of it. So we had these books. And I just want them. I want them all. I want the other two. I need to get them at some point. But I'm gonna do that as like a reward for like if I actually knit something out of here because like it's in Norwegian. So like we'll see. And I bought the yarn while I was there for it. And I think I bought this the the, the actual colors here because I was like I mostly knit pink sweaters. And so of course when I was there, one of the options I had picked out was black. Like imagine this in black, and then pale pink. And I like a little bit regret not getting that because I do think that that would look amazing. But I do knit patterns more than once. It is something I do. I knit like three love notes, two Sildanas. I knit two ink inkers jackets. Like I like I knit patterns more than once. So I'm hopeful that like if I knit this yellow and tan one, maybe I'll knit a black and pink one too. But I actually uh this year, this academic year, I'm on sabbatical. 
And so my vision with the purchase of this at Christmas and at Yarn was sort of like when the rest of the university goes back to teaching and the students have their first day of school that I would cast on like a special project. And I was thinking that would be my special project. No, I don't know if that's gonna happen because that's actually coming up probably pretty soon, like end of August or early September. I need to look when they're starting school. But I normally just swatching or casting on doesn't take a lot of effort, but I'm gonna have to like translate this pattern and take some time to like read ahead. So <laughs> I'm a pretty active sweater knitter. Like I've knit a lot of sweaters. And so um, I feel confident that I can do it. I've also steeped my first sweater. So this will be a sweater, I, I, I mean, I assume it's steeped. I don't know for sure, but I assume it's steeped. So I, I feel like I've got the tools in the toolbox to do this and hopefully I'm not being overconfident. <laughs> so that's definitely some dream knitting. Um, my two other kind of dream knitting things are Sorry for the crinkling. I know that bothers some people. I actually like the sound of it, but you know, on the YouTube, some people don't like the crinkles. Um, I'm keeping it in this giant Ziploc bag. So, so basically, I have some leftover yarn from my Christmas Solana, and by some, I mean a lot. My mom got me two hanks of green and two hanks of red, probably thinking that I might need to use that. Probably worried I wouldn't have enough yarn and I did and I only needed one hank of each I did use a lot of it like this is the only amount of green I have left and it doesn't look like I have any red left so I mean I did use a lot of it but this is how much is of the copper that's left and this is how much of Streeter. So I don't think I have enough to knit a whole second Soldana. Like that would be, I don't think I do because of the street art. Unless I flipped, made this the arrow and this the background, which I could. But what I instead think I want to do is make Matilda a matching one with me. I think it'd be very cute. And she's a very picky and opinionated like what she wears very picky and opinionated about so I don't I don't know if she'll wear it but I think it would be really cool to match and I definitely have enough for us to match so the pattern does not go down to children's sizes so this would require some effort of mine <laughs> on my end but I feel like I could do it like I have this Book called Strange Brew by Tin Can Knits and it their sizing is very generous and they also in this sweater book Strange Brew they sort of like a recipe book like they're like this is what you need to cast on if it's fingering this is what you need to do if it's DK etc so I was thinking I could use the counts from there I might get some graph paper and modify a yoke I can do that so I don't know when I would do that but I would like to do it before this Christmas so I suppose I would probably need to maybe do this September or October. So that's definite dream knitting. Okay. The other dream knitting, and I didn't, I printed it off, but I forgot to bring it over here, is so that anchors jacket that I, I made for Matilda. That's an awesome color. I have this leftover yarn. And I haven't weighed it yet, but I think I should have enough. I should have at least, basically I need at least 80 grams. I need to weigh this. I should have weighed this before I put this out on, on the internet. But basically Petite Knit has this ebook. I don't think that patterns are sold individually. I think I had to buy the whole ebook. But it has doll patterns and there's an anchor's jacket doll pattern and so I want to knit one of Matilda's dolls 
matching sweater with her. And I definitely want to do that um, before her birthday or before Christmas so that the doll sweater could be like something she opens either for her birthday or for Christmas. Her birthday's in November, Christmas is in December. So I'm thinking like that's doable. Although part of me just wants to knit it now, like right while I have the yarn out, the, the, the anchors kind of flow going, but I definitely want to knit that. Okay, so I'm going to end my podcast with a segment called Sip Sip Knit <laughs> and also personal things. So if you don't want to stay around for that, you can go and thank you so much for like visiting me here and watching and making it this far if you've made it this far. Okay. For the Sip Sip Knit part of the podcast, like one of the things I've loved on the YouTube, like watching all the knitters is everybody is drinking coffee or tea. I'm a huge coffee or tea fan and they're always sharing what they're drinking and so I was thinking it would just be fun to have a sip, sip, knit segment. It's been sort of kind of a wild day for me. I actually almost didn't even record this, um, but I was like, no excuses, you're going to do it. So I don't have a drink, but I did bring like my tea with me, like the actual tea leaves to show you. I have been just straight up obsessed with David's tea straight up obsessed. I think I've made three orders this summer. I ran out of tea. I sometimes like have a problem where I'm not drinking water because I'm drinking so much tea. It's so good. <laughs> I even made like a reel on Instagram that's ridiculous for me <laughs> about David's tea. <laughs> so I brought one of my favorites over here. Uh, okay, it's this one. Okay, can you? Can you even peanut butter? What? And it's actually a fruit infusion tea. Like, okay, the ingredients, apple. It doesn't taste like apple to me. I mean, if I think about it really hard, I can pull out the apple notes, but really, if I'm just drinking it, it tastes like a peanut butter cup, like the candy. It's so good. And this has been just a nice treat. And this particular tea I want to share because I love it so much. It's one of my, it's like my top, in my top three from David's Tea. And... I drink this one hot or cold. So I'm sure if you're a hot fan or a cold fan. Let's see if the see if the drawings show here. Oh, you can smell it right now. It smells chocolatey. And it has cocoa bits in it, almonds, chocolate chips, and peanut and chocolate flavoring. So good. Okay. So I don't know what will become of my sip sip knit segment, <laughs> but I want it. <laughs> and I failed a little bit today because I didn't, I don't have my drink with me, but I brought the tea. <laughs> so personal things. So today, one of the reasons why I almost didn't record this is my husband and I have an anniversary. It'll be our 11th wedding anniversary coming up next week. Last year, we did this thing where we did a collective gift. Like we got one gift for each other. It was our 10 year anniversary. And for our wedding anniversary, for our wedding, for our honeymoon, we went to Italy and we ate a ton of pizza. And so we, and we love pizza. We're huge pizza fans and I mean, who is it? Like, I, I hear people like this, but I just, I can't imagine. So we love pizza. So we decided for our 10 year anniversary and we wanted to do something special. So we bought ourselves a Umi pizza oven, which is like a oven that you can make wood fire pizzas in. And we wanted to take a trip or something, but like, you know, COVID. <laughs> so we bought a wood fire pizza oven and it's been the best gift. Like, We've been making pizzas every Sunday since like it's pizza Sunday. I actually have earrings that are like pizzas <laughs> that I wear on Sundays for pizza Sunday. And 
It's so good. And I was like, man, maybe like I'm getting older or whatever, but like this together gift stuff, if it, like if it's a gift that keeps giving and gives you so much joy and something you do together, like this is amazing. We should do this again. So we decided to really put our heads together and think about what a good together gift would be. And we came up with stand up paddle boards. And I love the water. Kyle loves the water. Matilda loves the water. Um, so we just felt like stand up paddle boards like, would be a great thing. And we could use it where we live. Like there's a river in our town, there's a lake nearby. Um, it's the Pacific Northwest. There's plenty of places to take our stand up paddle board. And also, um, I've done some stand up paddle board yoga in like a class and things. So it just would be fun to have. And we did not realize like how hard it was going to be to get these stand up, stand up paddle boards. <laughs> and I think part of the challenge was that we wanted to get it like a good deal on it and we want to get it from Costco. And so they, yeah, it's been, we've been trying to get them. And so today, well, last night they said that they would be maybe delivered at this Costco that's um, near Portland. And so we called in the morning and it was there, but my husband, he works from home a lot, um, but it's more like a hybrid modality. So right now on Wednesdays and Fridays, he's in the office. So I thought Wednesdays would be a, like a good day, side note, to record my, record my knitting. <laughs> so I wouldn't feel so self-conscious at home. Uh, and anyway, so I was gonna record this today and make this like my thing, make sure I get it done. And then I, what I needed to do was drive and get these stand up pad boards because basically they said they did like sell out in the first hour or two. So proud of myself because I don't normally drive to go shopping. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I just don't do that normally. Um, that's just not in my, I can honestly say it was my first time driving to Costco by myself. <laughs> if I go to Costco, it's usually with Kyle or I just ask him to go by himself. Um, yeah, so I drove there and I bought these stand up boards they were kind of heavy and I just I felt really proud that I got that done but it did take up a chunk of my day but I'm so pumped that I have done this here today and also I got the stand up paddle boards and yeah so maybe the next time I record one of these I will have some video footage of us stand up pedal boarding and that would be amazing um I thought I would share what I'm reading um like my knitting, I cannot read just one thing at a time. <laughs> I <laughs> so basically my like kind of system of reading is I read something on my Kindle and I read that at night. And so I've been really into Sarah J. Moss. She's a young adult writer, writes series. I love series, I love fantasy. I am down a Sarah J. Moss rabbit hole that is very deep right now. And so I've been reading, she's got a series called uh, Throne of Glass. I'm on, I think the fifth book, it's called Empire of Storms. And that's what I'm reading. And I'm exactly 50% of the way through. And I read that at night on my Kindle. And then I read a, like a cover paperback book, like a physical copy. And I've been reading this book called Hamnet. So good. I didn't know if I would want to read it because it's a novel of the plague, you know, like <laughs> things going on in this world. I didn't know um, if I would enjoy that today as much as I would, you know, a few years from now. <laughs> so basically, if you're a William Shakespeare fan, you probably know all this. Um, this is new information to me, which is that William Shakespeare had three children, Susanna, Hamnet, and um, Judah, and Hamnet died. He and Judith and Hamnet were twins, and basically four years after Hamnet's death, William Sh Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. Now that I'm not giving anything away, that's not what this book is about. But the book Hamnet, like uh, in the late 1500s, the words Hamnet and Hamlet were interchangeable. And so this is the story of Hamnet, and obviously it's you know, fiction, but the author seems to have done an incredible amount of research, and it's well-written, and I'm really enjoying it. 
a lot. And it's a nice departure from my like fantasy hole that I'm in, which is the other thing I'm reading. So I actually read this already. It's another Sarah J Mass book and it's another Sarah J Mass series. And it's A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I actually read this last year. But then I heard that this series is going to be like a Hulu TV show. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get back into the series. I need to read the second one. But I've been so far deep into Throne of Glass. I was like, what happened in Throne of Glass? Or what happened in A Court of Thorns and Roses? And so I've been rereading it. And I... And as I'm reading it, I'm like, I do remember everything, but I just, I do think there are like little details that maybe it will be important as I go on to the second one. So I've been actually reading this in a mix hybrid way. So I have the audiobook from my library. And so if I go on a walk or go on a run or I'm like cleaning around the house, not necessarily always cleaning around the house because I don't want Matilda to hear it, but um, if there's an opportunity, I, like I have been listening to it in the home if I can. And then also reading the hardcover book. I actually just bought this. So when I read the book, I actually read the book from the library. And then after reading at the library, I bought it. Cause I, I just, I don't want to own lots of books. <laughs> I don't have space for that. Uh, I'm an obsessive reader, so mostly in my field of research, <laughs> reading, like I've had to work hard at reading fictionally lately. Um, I used to read a ton in my uh, my 20s. I, I just, my teens, my 20s, like early 30s even, I, I read a ton. And then as a professor, you read a lot. And so I found myself doing other things more, but um, I've been trying to get back to fiction reading and not just work reading. So I don't want, all that to say, I don't want to own a ton of books, but I do want to own books I really enjoy and want to reread. And for me, I see that with the Sarah J Moss books, just because I really love fantasy a ton and I really love series and characters. Um, so yeah, if you have any series recommend, that would be... <laughs> amazing you can do that um okay so that's sort of my personal things I want to share um so my intent with this video channel is to post a video every other week I think that for me that's a realistic goal I think I can do that every other week and that's what I'm going to aim for I think that I think a lot of my favorite video channels I watch they have something every week and Maybe if I get a better flow, I can get there one day. But for me, I just, if I can do this every two weeks for a bit, I think I'll be really proud of myself. So that's the intent. And so today is Wednesday, July 28th. So my plan was to record this on Wednesday, maybe edit this um, July 29th, and then get it up on Friday. We'll see. <laughs> And so thank you so much for coming here. I do have a Instagram. I'm Prof Pearl, which is P-R-O-F-P-U-R-L on Instagram. And I'm Prof Pearl on Ravelry. And I created an email address for this, which is Professor Pearl Podcast at gmail.com. And I'm also going to start a Ravelry group for this podcast as well in the hope that you'll just introduce yourself. Like ultimately the only thing I want out of this is like a knitting friend. So <laughs> I just want to connect with people. So I'm going to create a Ravelry group and it would be really awesome to if you go over there and just say hi and introduce yourself. And obviously you can introduce yourself in comments below too. And I'm, I basically just want to connect with other knitters. So I would love to know, um, what you're doing this summer. Like, what are you knitting? What are you reading? Uh, I, you know, 
maybe you're actually going places and doing things now. Um, what's that look like? So tell me about your summer. It's for me, the summer feels like it's rapidly coming to a close. I always feel that way end of July, just because of being a professor teacher life. But since I'm on a sabbatical from teaching this year, I actually like I've been trying to tell myself I should change the mentality of like that I have a lot of summer left like I, I still have all of August left and that's still summer and it's going to be incredible so anyway thank you so much for joining and I look forward to seeing you again